I was one of those kids who knew what they wanted to do when I think I was in about fifth grade and I knew I wanted to be a doctor. People used to ask me, well, what are you going to do in case you don't get into medical school? You need to have an alternative. And I'm like, well, I'm getting into med school, so I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> Sharon Brangman, who as a child was told that she couldn't become a doctor, became one of the major forces in geriatric medicine. Dr. Brangman is a visionary. She has an ability to take her scientific profession and to translate that into policy and compassion and other things that affect the lives of people. She has not only been a superb clinician and educator, she has actually transformed the character of medical training in America. I moved to Syracuse when I was in eighth grade. My family moved up from New York City. I looked around at different colleges, but I thought Syracuse University was just an exciting place. They had a good pre-medical program, and SU just felt right. SU helped me with critical thinking and problem solving. Those are the skills that you need throughout life, no matter what career you pick. At a time where minority physicians were underrepresented. She had to overcome those stereotypes, those prejudices and biases without being deterred. I've always had to work really hard and be doubly prepared in order to make sure that I didn't succumb to other people's perceptions of what they thought I should be. She viewed every challenge as an opportunity to demonstrate that she could not only do what was required, but that she could do it at a level of excellence that would eliminate any possible doubt or question about her competence. My specialty is geriatric medicine, which means I take care of older adults. They're very complex, and that's what I love about this. Sharon essentially invented the concept of ethnogeriatrics. She found that there could be customized medicine that reflected the identity, history, and origin of her patients. We are a center of excellence for Alzheimer's disease, and we've helped set the standard for care for people with dementia in the whole central New York region. Right now, we're in the process through the Nappy Longevity Institute of developing a research program that's gonna look at brain health so that we can start to make an impact on that here in our community. Sharon Brangman has been completely relentless in the face of obstacles she also learned from them in ways that empowered her to help others more effectively. There's still challenges out there for people who are not perceived to belong or to fit in. When I see these things happening, I'm now more positioned to make sure that other people who are coming along are getting fair consideration. There is no question of her expertise in the field, both in terms of participation in research her abilities as a clinician, but there's something else. There's a magic ingredient here, her humanity and her compassion. She is so inspiring because she shows that the combination of the scientific vision and the personal touch works every time.